Hello everyone, this is David Arroyo and welcome back to the second part of how to Blender. So in this video, we're going to be discussing uh, how to edit some of our items and uh, maybe we'll look at some of the different uh, ways that you can view your item like uh, the render modes and so forth. So very first thing I'm quickly going to do because I keep forget doing that. Let's put on screencast so that when I move around, you can see in the left corner uh what i'm doing and let's uh let's start okay so uh, one of the things that in you didn't see in the previous video was for example how to copy and paste how to duplicate these items right so uh let's start with that we're still in object mode and let's say i wanted to duplicate this and have another item of it so a lot of people would try your you know controls uh, c control v right doesn't work here uh, so here it's literally shift D will allow you to duplicate D for duplicate. Okay. And then you have another item that is just floating around. And as soon as you press your left mouse button, then it will put it down. So again, shift D and you can move it around. If you want to delete the, um, the item, you can right mouse, you do a right mouse button and do delete or just press it and you do X and it will ask you if you're sure and then you just delete it. Uh, there's also the option if you have a uh, numpad, you can immediately delete it, um, at least on the Mac keyboard, I know for sure, without having to go through X and thingy. So you can just, uh, it's kind of like above your arrow keys, you've got like this, uh, yeah, delete key basically. Normally PC keyboards have it as well. Just press the delete key and normally it goes away straight away. Right, so again, shift D, you can move it around and place it anywhere you want. Um, and if you wanna get rid of it or either X or the delete button, um, but if you don't have it, you just press the X. Right, uh, let me quickly move this up. So I pressed control and maybe quickly repeat that from last video because I wasn't very clear on what happens when you press control and, and shift when you move around, but it's quite important. So I'll for that, I'll put it at item so you can actually see the measurements here, right? Uh, when you want to move things around, okay, so press the letter G, for example, and I want to move it around on the X axis, okay? Here, I'm just moving it around freely, okay? So you can see how the numbers change on the X axis. And I can let go, and that's great. A command Z for um, Mac or Control Z will undo that. Um, also, whenever you're in the middle of your action, okay, and you press escape, for example, you press escape now, it will always just go back. It will say like, okay, I don't wanna do this action. It just goes back, right? So in this case, let's say you wanted to move it on the X axis, okay, and you want to be extremely precise. So then you press the control button, okay, and you see how it goes in units in very, like, it basically follows the grid, simple as that, okay? And if you want to um, do micro movements, okay, you can press G again, X, and then shift. Shift will move it very slowly, like, you know, uh, so if I let go of shift, all of a sudden I can go fast. And if I press shift, then it goes very slowly. Okay. Works in all directions. So quite important, just a little tip. So all you have to do is just hold in shift uh, or control. And it gives you that extra level of, um, yeah, modification options, I guess, or movement options. Right. So before we continue, uh, so you guys remember that the tap, so when you press on the tap key, it goes between object mode and edit mode. Okay, so when we wanna start editing things, then we wanna be in edit mode, okay? Now, again, this is a tutorial that starts from really, really the beginning. So obviously anyone that knows how to do 3D, this will be a little bit like I know I've seen it already, but you know, I'm gonna explain it anyways. 3D items are made up out of vertices, out of edges, okay, edges, so these are lines and out of faces, complete faces. Okay, so you've got vertices, okay, which are the little dots that connect the lines, then the lines themselves, or edges as they're called, and faces, okay, that you have all over the place. Right, so as you can see, 
here are the here's a selection where you can select vertices okay so now if you want to edit a individual vertex uh, you can press uh, G and you can move it around um, so that's how that works but say you wanted to move a line or an edge okay so then you press the number two so here you are on vertex here you go to lines or edges and then here again G and you can move around um, and then that's the way to do it for that and the same for faces you press this one and then you can select a face and then G and we'll let you move around again now the, of course there are shortcut keys for that if you want to move between edge and face and so forth you just go to number one number one is for vertices for selecting individual dots or multiple dots or uh, however you want then uh, your number two goes for edges okay you can also select multiple edges at the same time um, and when you hold down shift you can select more and more okay so for example you want to select this one this one this one and this one you can do that by holding down shift 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 and then obviously you could have just pressed uh, the face immediately uh, so you go for face it's number three and then you select that but there is another way uh, that goes much faster you can hold down the alt or option button and if you normally it should work um, that normally lets you select an entire edge but let me quickly give me a second normally I were to select this yeah so the alt does select the entire edge loop if you will don't worry how I made that edge loop I'll explain that in a second uh, for some reason it does not do it here um, maybe because it's on the outside but yes so if you press alt uh, or option uh, on a selection like that then you can select all four sides in one go or 20 sides or however many there are but we'll get to that at a later point in time so these are the first three things that you need to know okay that you can select faces edges and vertices right once you get that and you know that you can move them okay and then you can move them controllably okay up down left right um, then you can start editing stuff and there are a lot of editing tools all of these tools all are for editing now I'm only going to focus on the ones that are like that you're going to use the most okay there, there's plenty of stuff but uh one of these things for example uh that you're going to do for sure is from time to time you're going to want to subdivide your surface okay and that is super simple you can just right click subdivide and all of a sudden you've got four of these now so four sides that you can work with and if you press uh, number one uh, you can edit that one and all of a sudden you've got uh, movement there now there are other ways of subdividing let's say you only wanted to subdivide it um, in two now you can do that by selecting one edge selecting the opposite edge and then subdivide there okay and then you can select the edge itself and then you can move again up and down so there are many many different ways of doing this again uh, but you, this is one of them okay same here you wanted to subdivide this for example subdivide now you've got that um, and if you wanted to make an edge loop that goes all around it then for example an easy way is pressing the letter k for its knife and you connect this line to this one or this vertex vertex to that vertex and then you just press enter and then you do the exact same on here so i press k and close it down here and there you go and now when if all goes well I should be able to yeah if I press the option key on a Mac or alt on a PC then you can just alt and then hold and then you have the entire edge loop and this edge loop you can press X uh, s for example for scaling and then you can scale it and you can say for example everything except for the is uh, X axis and then here you go you got all these scaling options that you can work with for example 
Okay, so, but again, we'll revisit the knife tool in a second. First, just showing you that you can do that. You can subdivide, so that's one. Right, what else can you do? You can, for example, and this is very popular, so you go to faces, you select a face, and you are going to extrude. Okay, extrude is this one right here, and you can just press the letter E, and then you can extrude. Okay, you can do this for any face. You select this face, press the letter E, extrude. Select this face, E, extrude. Uh, select this face, E, extrude, and so forth and so forth. And you keep going. Obviously, uh, when you extrude, it's always going to extrude in the direction that the face is looking at. So, for example, this one, if I extrude, it's going to extrude that way. Okay, so that's also very important. Um, now, let me see, let me find a good example where you would want to move something in that same direction. Okay, let's say you wanted to, yes, let's say you extruded this and you came to the conclusion that I, I actually should have made it a little bit longer. Um, so I'll move it, right? So I go to move and I press uh, Z. But what happens is that if you move it, you're only going to move it on the set axis. You don't want this. Okay, what you want is to move it along the direction that it's already facing, right? So what are you going to do then? Uh, here, you've got the way things move, okay? So you got your global, local. Uh, what you want is the one that says normal, okay? Normal means that it's going to move on the normal of the face, okay? So in which direction the face is pointing at. So for example, here. Okay, and that's how you get to move things in different ways. Um, so you might not, I mean, you won't notice it straight away on these things. Like when they're straight, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but when something is diagonal, like, you know, diagonally located, then you're going to want to change this to normal. And then afterwards, you can put it back to global to move these things around. No problem. Actually, this one is also a little bit... Um, crooked it's not really straight uh, so that one again if you wanted to extend that one go to normal and then you can either bring it back in or bring it out uh, of course there's also a menu for that and that's uh, not this one but the comma on your keyboard if you press the comma then you can quickly change between normal local global all that stuff um, I could explain all of these but again that would cut quite some time so let's just focus on what you're really going to use most of the time it's global and normal or local and normal that's pretty much it the rest yeah you can use them sometimes but i'll just discuss these things if we you know get to the point where we actually need that right um so that's that that's how you can quickly extrude and do all these kind of things right another thing that you can do let's go down the list uh, so inset faces. Okay, so let's say you select one of these squares or face and you press the letter I and then you can do one of these ones. Okay, so you're insetting the faces and it basically shows you how, um, you know, how to bring in a new surface that you can work with. And then, for example, if you wanted to extrude this, you can make yourself a little hole inside. Don't forget, if you want to focus on things, you can press the dot on the numpad, and then when you rotate, you're going to rotate around the actual item that's selected. This can be a face, a dot, like a, a vertex. Say I select this vertex and I press the dot on the numpad, um, then I can focus on it again. For those of you that do not have numpads, uh, you know, like a laptop or whatever, you can always press that pie menu. Remember with that accent that I said, the accent on top of the letter that goes to the left. Um, and then you can go to view selected and that will focus on the uh, select. So that's, that's the same thing as pressing the, um, the dot button on the numpad. Right. So once we got that, um, so that's insert faces. You can obviously, when you insert a face, for example, okay, oops, did something funny there. Uh, when you insert a face, okay, let's go back to edit mode and uh, let's select a face and I inset it. When I do that, there will be a little menu here at the bottom, okay? And this is this menu often comes in with a lot of different things. And here you can choose, look, the thickness, for example, you can modify it again. Uh, you can modify depth, like you can bring it out or bring it in if you wanted to do that, if that was the objective. 
uh, you can do an outset which basically brings it outwards um, yeah there, there's a lot of lot of lot of different things okay so that's also something that you might want to keep in mind do another inset and then you press extrude and then you do another inset for example and here extrude again so you can do a lot of things so this could be like a, a falling tower or whatever or or the base of a, of a big cannon or whatever you will right so that's something to keep in mind um, say you wanted to for example move this up and you realize like oh I forgot to bring this one up like you did this one you know like how it's a little bit uh, diagonally so again option I, I'm holding down the option key or the alt key on a PC and I select the entire edge okay all I have to do is just click one of these edges and it will select the entire edge loop okay and if I want to move this one again Remember, if I do this, if I just try to move it like this, it's going to do something funny. I want to move it on the uh, axis uh, that the face is facing. So I press on the comma and then I go to normal. And then now if I do this on Z axis, then it will go on the right um, in the right direction. OK, so quite important uh, to remember. Um, and you can add additional um, sections to it as well, which maybe I should actually show you right now. Uh, adding additional sections is done. That's this one, basically adding a loop cut. Uh, you can either press on it and then you see when you go over an item, it will show you where you can do a loop cut. So for example, here, uh, and then you just press or hold. And then you've got one, you can add another one and another one and another one, uh, wherever you want, right? So if I keep clicking, I'll just keep adding loop cuts. And what it does, it always does the the midway point between the last two uh, loop cuts. I'm doing Control Z or Command Z um, just to show you again. So if I do this and I now with the uh, so I press once and normally I could do this. Let me quickly do this the other way around because I think that only works with Control R. Let me try this again. So if I do a Control R, uh, then it should work. Yeah. So if I press the the um, yeah, the shortcut key control R. Okay, then you'll see an edge loop appearing. And if I start scrolling up, then I can add edge loops. So I scroll down, I can remove edge loops. Okay, so that's a very quick way of adding a lot of ed edge loops in one go. So if I do this and I press uh, OK or I just click, oh, and even then afterwards I can still slide them. So once I've actually selected the one, then I can still go up and down and say, okay, I want them right there. For example, in case you needed edge loops for whatever reason, uh, maybe you wanted to add additional detail on the sides or something. Uh, so you selected them and then you wanted to maybe, uh, I don't know, extrude them. Um, and here, wait, the way to do that here would be through, um, no, individual origins and then you extrude and that's the way it is. So uh, why did the individual origins work and the other one not? Uh, I'll explain that in a second. That has to do with your pivot point. Okay. So normally the pivot point uh, is I think often on median point, this one. Uh, so let's do that again. Uh, if for example, I wanted to extrude these individually. Okay. You can, yeah, you can always extrude like that. And if you press extrude, it will do it. Uh, and then you can go on the other side and do the exact same thing and you extrude and okay fine but the annoying thing is that you'd have to do it twice and you know if you want to make sure that all your sides are extruding at the exact same um with the exact same measurements you go to your pivot point and make your pivot point based on the individual origins okay the origins of the individual faces that are selected and if now i press extrude it will extrude out of the origins of the faces, um, which is a valuable tip. So same here. Um, if I do extrude now, it will extrude uh, in that way or inwards or um, always be careful when extruding inwards, because when you do that, I'll do that now just to show you. But obviously it doesn't cut the other faces okay, that were there beforehand. So you'll end up with all these faces that you don't really need. 
Okay, you, so you've got, and you've got the outer face, so the actual face, because I'm just showing you because these are things that I know you're going to encounter if you make this mistake. So let's say I delete this face. It will, you'll be like, wait, what the hell? I thought I deleted the face. Yeah, that's because this one is still there. Okay, so that's why you have to be careful when you um, extrude. Okay, so you have to keep an eye on that yeah, when you extrude inwards. You're basically creating double geometry. Um, and that you don't want. Right, so um, what else? So that was the extruding bevels. Bevels are interesting. So say you want to create a bevel on this. What's a bevel? It's kind of like when you start rounding things. Um, basically, that's all you're doing. You're just rounding it. Maybe I'll just show you with one edge first. So if I press this and I start dragging, okay, then basically what I'm doing is I'm creating kind of like a rounded corner, uh, but because there's only one segment, okay, here you can see the segments. If I press this, you'll have more segments, more segments, and then the more you bring it up, the more rounded it gets, okay? So again, depending on if you want this effect, you just select both, okay? And the when you hover over these things, you can see the shortcuts always. So this one is uh, for a Mac, uh, it's the, Command B, I assume for PC would be Control B. If I do that, I can normally, if it doesn't give me any hassle, should be able to drag and drop it. For some reason, it didn't do it here. So maybe it's because it was on individual origins, medium point. And so again, Command B. Nope. Okay. Sometimes that for some reason doesn't work. See, now I do it, it's fine. Uh, I do it here now, and it's fine as well. It can do both at the same time, I know for sure, because I've done it before. The only reason uh, why it's not working now, I'm not really sure. Uh, let's see. Let's just click on it and then try. Oh, there, yeah, it does work. Maybe it was the way I was um, moving the mouse. So it does work. Uh, and then you can add your curves. And then there you go. Quite useful uh, if you wanted to add some extra cool little detail. Works anywhere. Uh, for example, here, um, you wanted to do that here, same thing. Command B or Control B. And yeah, obviously it remembers the amount of segments that you used in the previous one. So it will immediately add them. Uh, it's up to you to then say like, whoa, 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 I did not want that many segments. This will be enough or you know, whatever you would need basically. Uh, and then that's it. Once you're ready, you just select anything outside of it and you've got that done. So uh, we've looked at extruding, at inserting faces, at subdividing. So only when we wanted to subdivide a particular region only. So for example, uh, again, if I subdivide this, it will subdivide four. But if I only want to subdivide, for example, a line here, I just select the two edges and I subdivide these. You can subdivide an individual edge, uh, but what you'll get is just a vertex in the middle and can't really do much with that vertex. You can always connect geometry again by pressing K for knife tool. And then it's kind of like, yeah, you're cutting new geometry, press enter. So you're just made new geometry uh, for that. Uh, what happens if, because that's also a very good question, what happens now, for example, if you, let's say you have an edge and you delete the face and you're like, oh, I have a hole in my geometry now. I need to close that hole or close the gap. Right. You can, there are several things you can do. Okay. You can select the edge loop. So again, with option, I just clicked on one of the edges. You can also do it with shift if you want, but it just takes longer. So option and then hold one of the edges. So I'm on here. You can see edges and then uh, you can do the F, press the letter F and that will fill in the gap, F for fill. Okay, uh, you can do that just the same for two edges if you want it. So say for example, you had, um, let me quickly create, yeah, let me delete for example this edge. So I'm going to press X. Now here you have to, there's a difference between deleting an edge. If you delete an edge, it collapses the, the surrounding geometry or I just did Command-Z or Control-Z to undo, or you can dissolve the edge. 
dissolve the edge, if I go to vertices, this vertex is still there because it has geometry here. This vertex here is gone. Now again, remember, I can just subdivide that as well. And all of a sudden I have an additional vertex here. So now I've got two. Now you could technically do this and then do F, but, but there's an important but here. Your surface under it, okay, your face has not divided. Okay, so it be simply it's because this, when I move this up, uh, it will move uh, because they're connected. But for some reason, it doesn't recognize uh, it as a literal division of the face. So if you want to divide the face in two, literally the best thing to do, uh, as I always said, is either with a knife. So K, press this one, you wait until it's highlighted. You go over that and then you're 100% sure, press enter. Now, you literally have two faces. Okay, so these are things that you're going to encounter. That's why I'm showing them. Uh, these are things that literally, little, little issues that you might find here and there. Um, good. So that is basically, yeah, the, 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 the main tools that you're going to use. Okay, these ones that I just showed you. Uh, they all have their own little menus when you do something. So don't forget to keep an eye on that menu at the at the left bottom corner. Um, you can always modify more things here and so forth. So uh, the other thing I said that we would maybe be looking into are uh, the, the um, different shading views, right? So there's also a shortcut key for that because Blender has a shortcut key for everything. Uh, so that's the letter Z. Okay, so if you just press the letter Z or Z, if you want to pronounce it Z, uh, you can see we can go into wireframe mode and you can see wireframe. Okay, and because I'm still in edit mode, I can still see all these little things here and there. Okay, um, now <clears throat> what happens when you're in object mode and you try to press one, two, three? As you've noticed, it does nothing. Okay, so you do have to go into edit mode. Okay, which you just can get in and out of by pressing the tab key. Very easy. Right. Uh, so this is wireframe. Wireframe is sometimes useful, um, you know, because then you can see what's behind it. Also, a very good tip is when you're in solid mode, which is the standard, uh, and you want to select all your vertices, look what happens. If I do this, wait, let me quickly, sorry, I was not on that. Let me quickly go on selection. And I think, okay, there you go. Everything is selected, right? Well, let me show you in wireframe. It's not the case. It's only going to select the vertices that it can see if you're in solid mode. If you go in wireframe mode, um, oops, did the wrong thing here. Wireframe, you can select everything like this. Okay, so you can put it uh, on vertices, on edges, on whatever you want. But now the selection is really uh, fully realized. So if you want to select everything, always go on wireframe. Don't try to select everything on solid because if you do this, the faces in the back are not really selected. It only selects whatever it could um, or whatever was in the line of sight of the camera. Very important to remember that. You can obviously change these things here. So you can go to uh, wireframe mode. You can go to uh, your solid mode. This is your shading mode, but one of those like a viewport shading where you have different type of uh, shading options. So here you can, for example, set up different lights and all that stuff. Uh, it would look differently. Uh, this is with high dynamic range maps and stuff like that. We're not going to get into that because you're not really going to have to use that that often, but it's very useful at a later stage. And then this is the one where you can see shading and stuff. So based on this, uh, oh yeah, if you want to select other items again and you're in edit mode, you're going to have to go back to object mode first and then you can select the light source, for example. So now you'll see that if I move the light source, okay, then shadows change and so forth. Uh, and the intensity and all that stuff, you can modify all that as well. But again, that we will see in another video. Another thing that's quite useful is when you are, for example, working and you might want to see, um, I think it's this one, show x-ray, yes, X-ray, I don't use this very often, but it can be useful if you want to see certain uh, geometry that's behind or in front or, you know, sometimes can be useful. So it's just this one. Uh, what I do use, however, is uh, I want to see my geometry even when I'm in object mode. So normally when I go to edit mode, I can see all my lines and that's great. But what happens if I go back to object mode? 
then I don't see these lines anymore, right? The connecting lines. Some people might want to do that. Uh, and if you want to do that, you just go here, view port overlays. Okay, so it's on this one. Uh, and these are your overlays. You go on them and you select wireframe. And then that means that at any point in time, even when I deselect, I can see the wireframe uh, on my object. Uh, there are even more things you can do once you select it and you go to edit mode. This is quite important. You have to be in edit mode to do this. You can also see the menu changed. So now you've got your wireframe and you got all these kind of things, but you also have your edge length. This is super useful because when I am holding down uh, when I want to know, for example, the height of a particular edge or length, here I've got it. It's tiny for the camera, so you, I mean, you guys are not going to see this on on YouTube, but uh, trust me, there's it's there's a measurement there. In this case, it's two meters and fifty four centimeters. So you can change the measurements um, if you say you don't want to see this in the metric system. Uh, you can go here to your options. Uh, on scene and you go to units and here you've got the metric or imperial imperial is now you have it in feet so eight feet 34 uh, but in standard it will be in the metric system just in case uh, you're not too familiar with the metric system and it drives you nuts that's where to change it uh, I use the metric system uh, that's what I grew up on uh, and it's what I'm used to um, but you can choose uh, anyway. So it's here again, and you go to units, and then here, metric, you can change it to imperial. Um, very useful, and then you can scale and all that stuff. Uh, but for now, you know, that's that's where you can modify that. Right, um, so I think that pretty much covers the basics, I would assume. Uh, again, don't forget uh, to keep an eye on your pivot point. So now it's at the median point, uh, which is the standard. Uh, but when you're modifying things like what you saw here, you might want to change that to individual origins. Um, a good example of well, where you would use that as well is, for example, uh, if you wanted to add Ah, that's something that may be very useful that we haven't done yet. Okay, say you want to add new geometry. You've been doing working on all this stuff and you need to create a new item. Okay, so uh, how to do that is uh, you can do that just by add and then add a cube, plane, circle, and all that stuff here. So it's all here, all the stuff that you need. Or you do shift A and then you can add a cube, for example. Where is it going to add? It's always going to add wherever the um, 3D cursor is located. Okay, so in this case, let me quickly move it uh, on the Y axis, one, two, three, yep. move it one up. And then I have a new item. What happens when I am in edit mode? So now I'm in edit mode, I can modify this item, I cannot modify this one, because I can only modify the item that I have selected. Okay, but what if, for example, in this particular item, I wanted to add a cube or whatever very useful you can do that too that's shift a again and you add the cube now don't forget this cube okay is now part of this geometry so what I mean by that is that if I go to uh, object mode you see that when I select this that's selected as well okay and I can edit this one as well I can edit this as much as I can edit that an important thing about measurements if you want to get them right um, say for example, uh, and that's also because I'm going to show you because that's something that's going to happen as well. So if I do this now, you can see it's 2m. Everywhere it's 2 meters, okay, 2 meters across. Now, if I were to scale this, okay, these numbers, they change, okay? It goes to 6 meters or whatever it is. If I'm in object mode and I scale now, I bring it up, 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 press, I deselect, and I go into edit mode, it will still say 2m. So very, very important because that's going to mess up your measurements. Okay, so when you make modifications to this, make the modifications, if you're going to use measurements, that is, make the modifications always in edit mode, no matter what. Okay, so you want to scale this, go to edit mode and scale it up and do whatever you need to do, but do it in edit mode so that your measurements add up. Okay, so that's also a very important little uh, tip that you can take with you. Uh, and I think that 
pretty much covers it. Um, there are more things, obviously. I mean, I've, I've said this in the first video as well. You're only covering the basics. Uh, of course, there are more things. And when you do have questions, feel free to put your questions uh, in the comment section below. Sometimes I might have the answer. Sometimes I might not. I'll be honest in that. I'm not a Blender guru. Um, but, you know, I can help wherever I uh, can find uh, the solution. Right, so that pretty much covers just the basics right now for editing. There's more and we might cover that in the next video if I come up with some more stuff that I can think of. Um, the viewport modes, uh, you've seen them here, so we're also going to see how to modify lights and how to modify cameras and all that stuff. We'll cover that soon enough. Um, but to add new geometry also, we've looked at that, uh, where you can just, for example, you wanted to add a floor to this. Let me quickly add, bring this one up, for example. Uh, so now it's on the surface. And let's say I wanted to add a floor. The easiest way to add a floor is just adding a plane and then just scaling this up um, really quickly. And then that gives you these cool shadows that you have uh, on the floor. So you can keep adding items like this on, on the go. So we'll, we'll cover all these things bit by bit. Right, so that's a, a quick introduction into editing. And in the next video, maybe what we can do is a little project um, to test our editing skills. Let's see if we, you know, if we picked it up. So maybe I'll just um, create a room with some items inside uh, just so that we can test our um, editing skills. And maybe we'll look at lighting as well. Right, see you guys in the next one.